first thing we need to talk about is what are the raised portions of the uh, of the brain called? You got all these bumps and grooves. What are they called? Starts with a G. <coughs> all right, no worries. The word is gyrus. Oh, yeah. Raised portions of the brain are called gyrus. And the plural is the word gyri. Now, this next one here, the lowered portion, singular is the word sulcus, and the plural is the word sulci. Now, as far as why do they exist, did you find that out? Isn't that where, like, veins and the, yeah, we watched that video and we saw there was a lot of veins that perf that would uh, go in between those. Pretend this barrier is your skull, and here's your brain, and you're learning new stuff, and you're developing, and it wants to grow, but it really can't do anything against that barrier. So as a result, it still needs that surface area, but it grows and folds into itself to accommodate uh, and make more surface area, even though it can't expand. So there's a great deal of surface area. And those ridges that fold down like that and that outer part of the brain is really important. The outer part of the brain is called the, and that's is on the next page at the top. That's the covering. There it is right there. What word is that? Cortex. Cortex is the outer layer of the brain. But because the big part of the brain right here that you see Pretty much above my fingers, everything that looks kind of brainy there, above my fingers, that's all called the cerebrum. So therefore, the outer part of the cerebrum is called the cerebral cortex. So if you've heard that term before, that's what that means, is the outer part of the outer layer of the brain there. Um, and it's different than the rest. I'm trying to find you a picture here. Uh, and a good cadaver brain here somewhere. You don't have brain sitting in the brain. I don't. I don't. I feel like. What if they shoot him in the head? <laughs> then you don't have a brain. To I'm just saying. I'm glad I chose to record this lecture. Yeah, you see the cord on the corner? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. Nobody knows your name, Addie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. All right. Whatever. When are you going to post the video? Uh, probably today. Okay. I'm totally sure. Okay. So check this out, gang. You see this outer portion called the cortex that goes all the way around there? Okay. That it's kind of a darker color. What kind of matter is that? Gray matter. Gray matter. This is where most of the cell bodies are. <coughs> That's where most of those, uh, where the soma, where the connections are occurring. That's all in the gray matter. And in the white matter is ma mainly where all that stuff's just being sent from one place to another. So all the processing that's happening in the brain is happening on the outer edges there on the cortex. And all the stuff that's being sent is going through the middle there. So let's take a look at that here. I've got a couple other questions to answer with that. Uh, it's not the only cortex, and that should, uh, that should answer this question here too. I'll flip to this page. Note there, this almost looks the same kind of color-wise, except sort of inverted. The outer layer here, this is a kidney that we're looking at, where all the nephrons are located, or nephra are located, or is in this area out here. That's called the renal cortex, because the outer layers are different than the inner layers. So that's another example of a cortex. Um, so, gray. Um, what accounts for the difference in color? Oh, we went back to this part of the sheet here. We have attended these matters. Two types of matter in the brain. What were they again? Gray matter and white matter. Yeah, gray matter, white matter. Yeah. All right. So gray matter and white matter. And of that, what accounts for their difference in color? Yeah, yeah. Uh, myelinated. The, the bottom line is fat, okay? Because fat is white. Uh, 
myelinated portions of the CNS are white because they are filled with fat. Anything that's not myelinated is going to be gray in color. And places that are gray are dominated by cell bodies. Like I think I mentioned that here somewhere. You said it, but you didn't like that anyway. Okay. Hey, did you find out with the two different spellings of the word gray? Mm -hmm. Yeah, UK is EY, okay? So E for England and then and then A for America. Should be M. America. <laughs> anyway, that'd be Grumay. That wouldn't Insert be right. Evil sound <laughs> yes. All right. All right. So let's get down to uh, business down here. Your brain is this big. <clears throat> well, that'd be huge if it was as big as the wall there. Um, <laughs> take both your fists and put them together about like that. That's about how big your brain is. Okay. That's okay. Like, I got tiny hands. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. It'll be fine. You guys, normal sized brains. It's fine. Okay? Now, true or false? We use 10% of our brain. True. No, isn't it like we, we only use like 4%? Yeah, we use all of it. So take your hands like that and bring them all the way around. Don't so, listen to me. I use all my brain, everybody. I use all my brain. Okay? Now, you may or may not use all of it at any given time. Okay? Um, but during the course of the day, let's look, for example, here's some stuff. If you're moving anything in your body using a muscle, you're using this gyrus right here. If you feel anything, you're using this gyrus right here. If you're processing or thinking or basically your personality is tied up in this one right here. If you're looking at the screen and seeing this pencil move, it's being processed right here. If you're hearing my voice, it's being processed right here. So different regions of the brain control different things. You won't necessarily all use them all at one time, but during the course of the day, you'll certainly use 100% of your brain. Okay, so let's go to um, <coughs> this drool ring here at the bottom, and let's let's find some borders and shades and things like that. Do we need colored pencils? Uh, I'm gonna use colored pencils. You can do however you like. You can stipple if you wish, uh, or or perhaps cross hatch, make some lines, mm -hmm. circles, however you dig, or colored pencils what is fine. Are you I'm gonna use. Uh, well, if I can get this one, I'm probably going to use blue for the frontal lobe. Uh, probably orange for parietal. I'm going to use black for the whole thing. Oh, man. <laughs> I feel like you're expressing some sort of deep-seated pain. Okay, so here is the... Uh, I'm going to use green. Yeah, it's hard to tell in the dark, sorry. Uh, and then over here... The occipital, I'm going to use uh, yellow, and then yeah. down here, I'm going to use purple. Yeah, I didn't say it was going to be easy. I, I also have a pencil sharpener that is just going to shred this like a like a beaver. It's 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 going to be awful. I have a pencil sharpener, but it like opens up my bag. That's right. Yep. Oh man, you got all kinds of. Wow, look at that. That kind of worked out sort of okay. Oh, okay. Just pull out your pocket knife and start whittling. Um, I don't think you can pull out your pocket knife at school. Yeah, especially on video. Well, it's on What's the difference between purple and smoky purple? Well, we'll smell that one, see if it smells like smoke. No, I'm feeling it. Or exactly. That'll work too. I can't wait to watch this video. That's All right. So here we go, gang. First, the lobes. The good news is if you were paying attention first semester, you might know these names for these lobes because they're named after what? Yeah, the bones in the skull. It's super convenient. That's why I spent so much time on that. So many other structures are named after... Wow, I just had a flashback. Yeah, what line did that come Seventh grade, I had to color a map that included the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I was in a hurry. So I started scribbling in circles like this. 
to finish it up. And Mr. Lind, I still remember, seventh grade history teacher, collects it from my row, stops at mine, looks at it, holds it up to the class and says, what's going on here, Andrew? Is this a hurricane? (laughs) 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 Uh, I think my response was to turn red and then slink down in my chair. (laughs) That was my, my response for most things in seventh grade. All right. Okay, what lobe is this? That's the frontal lobe. Makes sense because it's in the front. It's by the frontal bone. It stops right here at this particular sulcus. And that forms a border between this and the parietal lobe, which gets a little tricky because the parietal lobe follows this border and then it kind of doesn't. Yeah. So we're going to go up to right there. And where exactly does it end? Well, it's a little different in each brain. Though the gyri are roughly the same, they're not going to be identical in every brain. And some of the sulci in some brains are wider than in other people. Um, there's, there's a lot of variation therein. Hey, what do you think about that? Every time you learn something new, you get a new wrinkle in your brain. You think that's true? Oh my gosh, no, there's no way. You would have billions of wrinkles in your brain. It would be hard to keep track. How about this? Every time you learn something new, you form a new connection between neurons. Yeah, that's probably true. Or you strengthen a connection between neurons. Okay, this lobe right here is called the what? Parietal lobe. And we got this one in the back here. Right by the bone in the back of your skull. This lobe is known as the occipital occipital lobe. I think it's so weird because like your eyesight goes to the back of your skull. Yeah, I always wonder. It's puzzling. It's like that doesn't seem like a convenient setup. Myth about how we see everything upside down and like our brain flips. Is that like true? It yeah. is true. And it, the logic behind it is is very simple. Uh, if you just if you've ever looked into a spoon, you know it's true because the the retina itself is is concave like this, mm-hmm. which means what's what you're seeing reflected on the top would be on the bottom and vice versa. So it has less to do with the fact that the brain wants it that way. It has more to do with the fact that the shape of the the shape of the back of the eye being the inside of a ball is curved inward. It, it and your yeah, your brain has to make that image right side up. Yeah. All right. Last one right here. That part of your brain that worked, and you always thought you were upside down. Yeah. I'm on the ceiling. <laughs> 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 well, no, you'd still be on the floor, but the ceiling would be like. Okay, where are you using purple? Would be up there in the ceiling. I already used purple. purple. I'm gonna color Sarah purple. Sarah be able. Are you nicknaming the parts of the brain now? It's called Sarah. That's just her first name, though. Last name is Bellum. Ah. <laughs> All right, this one right here, that's not the cerebellum. This is the what? Temporal, Temporal lobe. Okay. Then finally, here's, here's Sarah. Now, I probably shouldn't have colored the darkest thing on here purple, so you probably won't be able to tell in this lighting that I did anything. You can tell. This dark mass colored another dark color. It's called Cerebellum. If my last name was Bellum, I would definitely name one of my daughters Sarah. Are you serious? I would have, yeah. Just for fun. I think that I'm gonna teach physiology and anatomy for crying out loud. You gotta do something with it. Okay. I don't think I would have spelled it C E R E though. That would just be too much. Last Bellum. How they try to put C to an S, would be fine. How would they try to pronounce it in class? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I understand that pain. 
All right. How do you understand Yeah, it's the cerebellum, like the little thing you just took off the two. It's it like this like whole this? underside right here. But it's not that little, like, This little right thingy is something else, so we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Raised ridges were called what again? Gyri. Gyri. Okay, we've got a, and then and the lowered parts are? Soul. Soul side. I'm going to darken this one here. It exists, but I'm going to follow it down here like like a mountain stream trickling down. Should we just like color it like black or something? Yeah, but I did it with Sharpie earlier to find out that it certainly bleeds through to the other side when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. I could have told you that. So you were using the Sharpies again. This is the central. Your pen when I gave you shouldn't bleed through is that. Only <coughs> dots, but it shouldn't be bleed through. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's the central sulcus. So in front of that is a gyrus. Can you guess what it's called? Control. You're really close. Why aren't you using your pen? Don't touch Because I'm using my pencil. That's why. All right. This is called the, and you're very close, Michael. This is the pre-central Gyrus. It's called pre because it's what? Before. It's before. It's in front of. So I'm going to put another one here and just use some dots on it. I tried doing this with a with a mechanical pencil and it just shoved the lead back in there. So I had to get something stronger. What are you doing? Army strong. This pencil <coughs> right here. Yeah. That's a free product placement for the U.S. Army. Yeah. Back here is the what? Post-central gyrus. Okay. That leaves just a couple of things here. All right. Put your left hand on the left side of your head. Now move your right arm and say, this side of my brain moves this side of my body. Now switch them and say, this side of my brain moves this side of my body. Okay, so for whatever reason, and they asked me all day, Mr. Hulley, what's the what's the significance of that? What, why does that help us biologically? I have no idea. I, I don't know what why that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but it certainly is that so okay some people like dumb and some people dumb another great question i don't think we can find that in the brain i'm not sure what makes someone dominant or uh, uh, right-handed or left-handed either okay there, there are two lumps here that are important this big one here is called the pons this small one right here is called the medulla oblongata. Yeah, it's like we used all the letters on this and there wasn't <laughs> anything left for that. The big one's called the, yeah. So the big word is the little thing and the little word is the big thing, yes, yes. Now, here's the crazy part. This can all die and you can still live. Because your heart rate, your your body breathing on its own, and all that kind of stuff is controlled by this area. Mostly this, modified a little bit by the pons. But the medulla does all kinds of stuff, and we'll get into the brainstem anatomy later on. But from here down, if this is still functioning, your, your heart's still beating, you're still breathing, okay? Um, now, you wouldn't feed yourself and stuff, so it'd be short term unless uh, unless there was like a feeding tube and stuff like that. That's what brain death is. When the cerebrum, uh, the blood flow to the cerebrum has stopped uh, is that for an. Someone's preferred to as a vegetable. Uh, yeah, they'd be in a vegetative state if they were if they were I like that. I thought vegetables like they just didn't wake up. I thought like they could just like control everything. 
I don't think that 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 we'd have to delve into, but I think that's two different things. I think someone that's in a coma, maybe, but like in a vegetative state, there wouldn't they wouldn't have any ability. Um, okay, so so basically, here's what keeps you alive: this portion of your brain stem, and this right here is how we know, are conscious of, and interact with the world around us. Okay. Here, in a, in a nutshell, the cerebellum is where we kind of program stuff in, uh, learn how to walk, learn how to play guitar, learn how to do all these kind of things. Coordinated muscle movements working together is pretty much what the cerebellum is. But I don't want to focus on functions. This is mainly about anatomy today, just these main parts here. Um, I think if there's anything else I need to mention. I think that should do it for today.